Hey guys, Julian here. In this video, I am going to show you how to monitor your audio when you are using the NT1 fifth generation. Whether you are singing, speaking, or playing an instrument, hearing what you're recording clearly is very important. This is known as monitoring your audio. How you monitor your audio with the NT1 fifth generation will depend on what type of output you are using. When you're using the XLR output to connect to a mixer, a console, or an audio interface like the AR1 we have here, simply plug your headphones into the device's headphone output, and then you can turn up the level until you can hear yourself comfortably. It's really that simple. Now you'll be able to hear your microphone as you record. If you're using the NT1 fifth generation's USB output to record directly into your computer, the monitoring process is a little different. You'll simply need to use the headphone output on your computer or an external device like an audio interface if you have one. Now, the exact process will be a little different depending on which digital audio workstation or audio software you're using, but we are gonna be walking through how to monitor your audio using Reaper. Now, if you don't own a DAW, you can download our free recording software, Rode Connect, to record with your NT1 fifth generation. You can get that via the link in the description below. First, ensure that your mic is connected via USB. Plug your headphones into your computer's headphone output, and then we can open our software. Now, if you are using the ASIO driver on a Windows computer to record in 32-bit float mode, you'll need to be sure to close all other programs before opening your audio software. Next, open the input and output device settings in your DAW. In Reaper, this is under Options, Settings, Device. Here, you can select Rode NT1 5th Gen from the input dropdown and external headphones from the output dropdown. Again, if you are using the NT1 5th Generation's ASIO driver on Windows, there is a slightly different process. First, you will need to select ASIO as the audio system. Then, in the Audio Device Settings panel, open the ASIO configuration screen. And here, you can select the built-in output as your output device. In this panel, you can also adjust the buffer size and input gain, which we're gonna talk about shortly. Next, we'll just need to create a new track, make sure that the NT1 fifth gen is selected as its input device, and then we can click the record arm button. Now, you should be able to hear the audio coming in through the microphone. If you can't hear anything, double check that the monitor setting is turned on rather than off or auto. Again, this process will be different depending on what DAW you are using. So if you're not familiar with the process of setting up a track and activating direct monitoring, check out your software's user guide. Now, there are a few different factors that will affect how loudly you can hear your microphone over your headphones. This includes the output levels of your audio track, your master DAW level, and of course, your computer output. Assuming your track and DAW levels are set to their default state, you can adjust your computer's output level to taste. The other factor is your input gain, which affects the volume that your microphone will record at. To adjust this on a Mac, open Audio MIDI Setup, select the NT1 fifth generation, and adjust the primary slider. On Windows, open the Sounds menu, go to Recording, double-click the NT1 fifth gen, and go to the Levels tab. If you're using the ASIO driver, adjust the input gain slider in the ASIO configuration panel that we showed you earlier. Now, if you notice any latency while you're monitoring, meaning a slight delay between when you speak, sing, or play into the mic and when this audio comes back to you in your headphones, you can reduce this by lowering the buffer size in your audio software's settings. This is found in the same device settings screen in Reaper that we showed you previously and is also found in the ASIO configuration panel if you're using Windows and the custom ASIO driver. Now, the amount of latency that you will hear depends on a number of factors, including the audio software and computer that you are using, or even the number of programs that you have open in the background. It's not caused by the microphone itself, so lowering the buffer size in your audio software is the best way to combat this. Do this while speaking or singing until you're satisfied with the result. Be aware, however, that lowering the buffer size too much can result in clicks, pops, and other digital artifacts. Often, it's a matter of finding the right middle ground between a comfortable amount of latency and smooth operation in your software. 
if you have one, using an external audio interface is also a great way to monitor with low latency. To do this, simply select your interface as your output device. As mentioned before, our free Rode Connect software is a great solution for recording with your NT1 fifth generation, especially for podcasting or voiceovers. To get recording with Rode Connect, simply open the software and allocate your mic to a channel in the assignment screen. To choose your output, go to the preferences menu, click the monitor out dropdown and select your preferred device. You can also select ultra low latency mode in this menu, which will lower the buffer size to reduce any latency. And those are the different ways that you can monitor your audio with the NT1 fifth generation. To find out more about 32-bit float recording, digital signal processing, and other features of the NT1 5th Gen, check out the links in the description below. Happy recording, everyone.